When you visit Japan for the first time, there are a few cities that get most of the attention. Kyoto, Osaka, Fukuoka, of course Tokyo. But out on the countryside, there's a city, no, no, not even a city, rather a town named Hakone, which you've probably never heard of, but which also houses two hidden gems for the country. First is this amazing Ryokan, and quite possibly the most relaxing hotel you'll ever stay at, Gora Kadan. Second is the crown jewel of the country, Mount Fuji herself. If you want to experience real, authentic Japanese culture, participating in every aspect of it from your wardrobe to your surroundings to your cuisine, then nothing beats staying at what some claim to be the oldest style of hotel in the world, the Japanese inns, otherwise known as ryokans. And if you want to get a glimpse at the majesty of one of the Earth's most stunning vistas, there's not much that can compare to the diamond Mount Fuji. Join us while we take you on a Zen adventure through our lens in the world-class accommodations of Gora Kadan and stay with us as we visit and see Japan's largest mountain for the first time ever in person. Watashi no chanero o koloko shite kudesai. Uh, that means please subscribe in Japanese. Sorry if I butchered that. Deep in the Japanese countryside, about an hour's train ride away from Tokyo's mega city, is a hotel nestled in within the overgrowth of a hillside. Upon arrival, we were given a small gift, one of many that we'd received throughout the stay a chestnut mochi. The arrival gift begins to reveal the underlying concept behind the Ryokan, that this location is a showcase for Japanese culture, specifically old Japanese culture, maintained in spirit through places like Gora Kadan, and practiced as though their traditions have been left untouched by the modern urbanism of the outside world. Japanese culture, as I experienced it, seems to revolve around peace and zen, oneness with nature, and a respect for one's surroundings that's long been lost to these entitled times. Part of respecting your surroundings is respecting the culture and the requests that it makes of you, like changing out of your Dragon Ball Z sweater and donning garbs more in line with 8th century Japan. I have to say, the change of outfit does change your mind a bit as you buy in more to the quietness around you. Growing up in a generation filled with noise, nothing but noise, noise in every corner, every second from the moment we wake until the moment we sleep opting for noise, the iPhone generation would do well to heed the warning implied by places like this, that a world without quietness and tradition loses itself and that luxury is not always about fancy rooms 500 feet above sea level overlooking some concrete jungle. Sometimes luxury can be found on the ground floor, connecting with the very trees that we're so quick to avoid. You've been able to see very clearly that the rooms here are quite barren of technology, save for the lights and a very small TV that's begging to be ignored. The charm of the place, believe it or not, comes from the sliding doors, the beds on the floor, the lack of chairs next to your table as you prepare your coffee or tea. 
It is an invitation to only live with what you absolutely need. And I'm telling you, there is an abundance of wisdom in that. Now, that doesn't mean that there's nothing to do here, by the way. Far from it. Let's head to one of the main selling points of our stay here. Before arriving at our final spot, we pass a couple of other amenities of note throughout the hotel, like the gift shop, the fitness center, and the pool. All lovely, but the piece de resistance was definitely the onsen. For the uninitiated, an onsen is a naturally occurring hot spring, providing geothermal water rich in minerals that people can visit and relax in. These onsens exist all over Japan and are normally surrounded by a ryokan like this one or some other type of lodging to stay close by. It's very common for these wash buckets and shower heads to be provided so that you can rinse thoroughly before entering and after exiting the spring water. This emphasis on hygiene is evident throughout the Japanese culture as they keep themselves and their surroundings constantly clean. The onsen is no different. In Gora Kadan, they've done a wonderful job of incorporating the surrounding nature of the hot spring into a structure that fits the atmosphere perfectly. A close by sauna uses the steam generated from the hot spring to provide an otherworldly heat therapy, while the surrounding natural environment is nice enough to simply sit down and enjoy for a while. Everything here seems so perfectly manicured and curated to give you that zen-like experience. Some might even call it a spiritual retreat to be in a place like this. I imagine it's in moments like these, when the silence and solitude of the earth shine through, that people really discover who they are. Maybe that's a bit much, but it's what I felt. That by itself more than justifies the price of entry here. As nighttime settled in, I trekked back to our room where a new experience was awaiting us. One of the great joys of staying at Gora Kadan is experiencing their menu of authentic Japanese cuisine. Rather than sit at a traditional restaurant, the food is brought directly to our rooms where we can sit comfortably on the floor and feel what it would have been like to dine in Imperial Japan. According to our host, no dinner can truly begin until we cheers. So after being served plum wine and some very vibrant sake, we were ready to receive our food. Growing up in America, I can safely say that our culture was devoid of most of the foods that were served to us here. And sadly, that's not a good thing. Japan replaces the overprocessed junk of the American palate with whole foods primarily centered around seafood and local vegetables. The plates are very austere while still feeling unique and creative. A very curious balance to strike with such seemingly simple dishes. The feast itself was made up of nine courses total and listing them all here briefly, it was an appetizer, hors d'oeuvre, soup, sashimi, grilled dish, simmered dish, small dish, rice dish, and dessert. We must have spent a good two hours just sitting down and eating, making us feel like the emperor's special guest back in the 1800s. Of course, Michelle and I weren't entirely used to some of the bolder Japanese flavors, but that didn't stop us from trying everything presented to us. It was a delight to experience the care and craft that went into passing every single plate our way. And while the foods were different, and excellent, they still weren't the best part of our dinner. For us, the service from our wonderful host brought this meal from special to unforgettable. You see, our host was a connoisseur of tradition, and as such, he would always bow twice prior to entering our room. 
Now, since Michelle and I aren't royalty, I'd be lying if I told you that it didn't feel strange or awkward. But it was also incredibly endearing. The hotel staff treated a couple of American foreigners as though they were family, a fact that I'll always hold close to my heart. And beyond simply bowing, our host graciously served us all of our food and explained every dish in depth, even telling us how to eat certain things. By the end of the meal, he felt more like a brother than a host, having left a lasting impression on both of us. And so with dinner being a rousing success, we closed out our night in bed to rest up for the last adventure in this city. We did get to enjoy one final meal at Gora Kadan, which was breakfast the following morning. The breakfast here centered around a freshly caught fish, grilled to perfection, and served with a smorgasbord of Japanese fixings. No eggs, no bacon, no pancakes, no ham, no hash browns. Just healthy fuel for the day. Imagine that. Our host Kai was very sweet to us, knowing that we'd be departing soon. Kai even gave Mishi a little going away present, which was super nice. Super nice. I wanted to hug him, but I don't know if that's appropriate to do. Yeah, so we just bowed. But I really wanted to hug him. He's so sweet. And so with that, we were driven from Gora Kadan to the local cable car station in a private car commissioned by the hotel which was much appreciated. The journey up the mountain close to Hakone was peaceful and punctuated by moments with pretty incredible views. Pit stop, gotta make a transfer over to a gondola. But I'd say that the fun really began when we got onto the gondola and started trekking up the final stretch of mountain, where we eventually made it to an opening and the reveal of Mount Fuji. I told you it was right over this hill. The whole cable car just kind of like erupted because we can see Mount Fuji. And that is an impressive freaking mountain. That is an incredible mountain. The town at the end of the road was nestled between a volcanic field spewing sulfur and a small forest. This sulfur field was active enough that being outside had a faintly unpleasant scent that intensified as you got closer, but the smell dissipates as you walk towards the commercial center, which, for some reason, has a wild obsession with these black eggs. Here's Hello Kitty in a black egg. And here's the actual black egg itself which is sold and promoted everywhere here. But the volcanic fields and black eggs are just a footnote. The real reason to come here is to have a clear, unobstructed view of the tallest mountain in the country, Mount Fuji. Sometimes in life you get to these like, mama, I made it moments. Having Mount Fuji in the background, that's one of those moments. At 12,300 feet high, this dormant volcano juts so far out of the earth that it's clearly visible all the way from the coastal town of Hakone, 40 miles away. 
It's a unique mountain because of how absolutely it towers over the nearby mountains, making it unmistakable. It's no wonder that the Japanese have chosen this as the ubiquitous symbol of their nation. And that was our adventure through the small, unknown town of Hakone. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a like so I can make even more of them. And a subscribe to the channel would absolutely make my day. I mean, I'm not a very big channel. This would be awesome. I will catch you all on the flip side. Peace.